Ladies and gentlemen, honoured speakers, welcome, good morning. As a joint host of today and as the first speaker, um, let me welcome you to what I think and hope is one of the more important events of the year. I'd also like to thank the Institut Francais for welcoming us, for enabling us to hold this event here um, today. I'm going to be very, very brief because I don't want to get in the way of our illustrious speakers uh, sharing their opinions and knowledge. And I only have three slides, three slides to show you. But I did want to say two or three what I think are important things and leave them with you. As we know, 2015 is a key year in our fight against climate change. And the COP in Paris in November and December this year is the deadline we have to reach a new deal that keeps alive the prospects for limiting global warming to within 2%. I think we can accept, I hope we can accept today, that failure to do that is going to risk some dangerous, not risky, but dangerous impacts. After the Lima call for climate action, the UK government feels we're on track for an agreement. We're optimistic. But we have to make use of this year to make that secure. And in doing that, we must use this year to bust some myths. Now others in the room are much more expert than I am, but for me, the big myth that we need to explode this year is that action on climate change will automatically impact negatively on growth. That is just not true. On the contrary, ambitious climate action, if done well, can support economic growth. And that's the main finding, again, as you'll know, of the report by the International Project called the new climate economy. So that, if you like, is the first thing I wanted to share with you, the view of the British government. You'll hear about the report's findings from experts who are much more competent than I am today to give their views on the details. Um, so I shan't dwell on this report and its conclusions. I'd rather draw your attention to a new, freely available online tool called the Global Calculator. This tool allows people to explore the physical actions and behaviours that can reduce emissions. It's the first climate modelling tool that's designed for a non-expert audience. Now, the approach is very different from the one taken by the new Climate Economy Project. It looks at various levers we can use in developing the world economy by 2050. And it makes it possible to compare rival visions of the future and understand them. The main finding of using this tool so far is that we can prosper while taking climate change action. The new climate energy, I beg your pardon, the new climate economy report has arrived at the same conclusion. Good climate policy can reinforce economic growth. So this is my last slide. This is our calculator. So far, the UK has helped over 20 countries to develop new national level modelling tools, building on the success of our, own uh, of our own calculator, which was created in 2010. But now, with this global tool available, we can also examine how national measures add up to the global target, or what risks we face as a result of not taking action. With the global calculator, you can explore the interdependencies between energy, food, land, and climate systems and what a lack of action 
will mean personally, as a group, or as a country for you. Now, these complex relationships are not widely understood outside the expert community. But we hope that with this new cal uh, calculator, just like the new climate economy project, we'll be able to explode the myth that fighting climate change is bad for growth. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, our conviction for a third or fourth time in three minutes is that ambitious climate action, if done well, supports economic growth. Thanks for your attention. Have a great day.